We are the Anglican Diocese of Toronto. From Mississauga to Algonquin Park, we continually strive to create communities of hope and compassion. Parishes all across the GTA continue to grow and develop as the diocese provides a constant presence throughout their journeys, encouraging fresh expressions and being the resource that will assist in the construction of healthy, inherited churches. Before one's journey can even begin, one needs to know just how far along in the journey one actually is. The Natural Church Development, or NCD, process allows congregations to gauge the overall health of their parish, as well as providing an in-depth look into possible areas of improvement. The NCD process involves uh, a church going through some defined steps, using some research tools provided by NCD Canada, and um, identifying areas of strength and weakness as determined or indicated by the survey tools. The congregation then commits to take that information and develop an action plan uh, using areas of strength to build up areas that are weaker in the congregation. We're partway through our second year of, uh, of NCD and it's been a very um, exciting development in the life of this parish. We were very fortunate when we did our first survey to find that uh, we had some good basics in terms of structure, organization, satisfaction of the people involved with the tasks that they were doing. But we did discover where our, our shortcomings were, passionate spirituality, evangelism, and small groups. And so we could start thinking about those things and how we can bring those positive qualities to bear on these weaker areas in our life. Uh, we were at a point where we, we didn't know which direction to take the church and so we did the NCD and it really helped us focus on what we needed to improve on and we ended up after a, a lot of discussion coming up with our slogan, Take Time for God. And it just seemed to resonate with a lot of people and it was something we could very quickly put into a bulletin and on newsletter on our bulletin boards and talk about on a weekly basis and we've seen huge results. We were absolutely amazed. We've seen our congregation grow. It is a fun place to be now. People are happy when they're here and, and seem very, very contented. And it's just given us a real sense of direction of where we need to be focusing. I guess the key thing uh, for NCD, for me as a coach, is really to see the development of relationship. Myself as a coach, to a leadership team, to a congregation, but also to see the, uh, the relationships grow between congregational members. As people who are committed to church growth and church health, work together, pray together, and wrestle together, you see the forging of new and stronger relationships. The ultimate goal is to propel congregations towards health and vitality, both of which are crucial if one wishes to proclaim the gospel to one's community. NCD, I think, has helped us recognize a tendency that I've seen in other Anglican churches as well, where we're so big on family and so big on community um, and the church family, um, that we sometimes forget about the spiritual under underpinnings of it all. And it's there. And so for us at St. Andrews, it has helped us to surface that. And I think that in turn strengthens that community. And so some of the things we've been trying to do is ask people when they're coming for committee meetings or ministry team meetings to talk about their faith. And so they open with a few Bible study questions, um, talking about how God's worked in their life. And we have, um, for the last three months, had somebody once a month speak at the end of the service for just a couple of minutes to answer the question, what has God done in your life lately? And when I first started this, there was all sorts of nervousness because this sounded like testimony, like a Baptist church kind of thing. And that's not really where most Anglicans are, I think. But as people have done it, it's been, oh, that's interesting. So this past Sunday when we had somebody do it, I said at the end, I thanked him and I said, you know, I'm going to be looking for some more people going forward. And if you don't volunteer, I'm going to call you, ha ha ha. Two people volunteered that morning. So that was really exciting because it says to me, people are ready to have the conversation. This cyclical process of NCD allows us to establish the good habits of taking a look at church health. Not ignoring problems, but facing them like churches have never had to do uh, in the past.
Well, I certainly would recommend uh, NCD to all the parishes in this diocese. I think it's, uh, it can be very revealing in terms of how you can take uh, um, the temperature of your parish. It's a great tool for finding out where your strengths lie and where your weaknesses lie. And, and uh, so you can focus on where you really need to put that energy. This is a Christian process that takes a look at Christian and church health regardless of denomination. I would strongly encourage church pastors, priests, church administrators, bishops and laity to seriously consider NCD. Take a look at it, understand it, and allow it to be a tool that you can use to help wrestle with church health. Once health is achieved, the next step is proclamation and mission. Let's get out there and let our neighborhoods know about the good news. We can all agree this is easier said than done. So to help equip parishes for the beginnings of this conversation, the diocese has spearheaded a new initiative called the Missional Transformation Process, or MTP. A number of congregations have embarked upon this two-year journey in order to become more missional in their individual contexts. There is a real desire. We know uh, that, that Jesus has sent us out into the world, that God desires his love to be spread, that the Spirit is in fact moving amongst the people of God and, and in the world. But yet we don't have, we don't know how to make that transition anymore. Things around us have changed so radically. What has happened over lots of years is that our parishes, as a worshiping community, have tended to become people of affinity, who know each other, who get along well. But the communities have changed and they've changed dramatically. One church suggested it quite well. It's like the church lives in a bit of a bubble. When can that bubble break and we can really more effectively not only change the community around us, but in appropriate ways, be ourselves changed by the good things in the culture that are happening around us. So what Missional MTP is about is how we start where we are as local parishes and we look out to our neighbors and communities and we learn to ask the question, what's God up to? out there ahead of us in those communities and how might we join God in engaging in mission and ministry in those communities and then and this is just as important a question in joining God in the neighborhood how is that going to change us so that just as we're reaching people we're becoming a different people as well. My role is to work in the Toronto Diocese by coaching the coaches that have been appointed by the diocese in terms of understanding the missional transformation here in Toronto. Helping them to come alongside both clergy and specific churches to equip people in habits and values and practices of missional church. In order to do that, we uh, give to the clergy uh, what we call a Pastor Leader 360. Each of the clergy people begin to uncover some of the adaptive challenges that they need to go through to be a missional leader. Along with that, we give to each of the churches a, an opportunity to be involved in what we call appreciative inquiry. Each of the church does about 30 different listening interviews within their community and uh, begins to hear what God is up to within their own people. We then give them what we call Church Leadership 360 which helps them to take a look at some of the issues that pertain to some of the structures within the church which either inhibit them or help them to move out into the neighborhood. There was lots of learning, there was lots of time for reflection, which I think was important. A lot of us in, in our, the churches don't take time to reflect, don't take time to um, reflect on God's Word, um, to listen to where God's leading us and where the Spirit's taking us. And, and so that pause, reflection time, was, was frustrating for some of us because um, we just wanted to get this process over with and move forward. At, at the beginning we were a bit skeptical and you know, it was so detailed, uh, but now it's, it's, we are so much involved, everybody is you know, on board, uh, we've got the congregation full support. Now that we have the 360 surveys done, we have our results, it gives us that clear picture of what, you know, it's a snapshot, it's a picture of, of where our church is at and what people in our church are thinking and we can take that snapshot and now it's, it's full steam ahead from this point forward. 
And so it's about engaging everyone and it's about facilitating um, us moving forward and hopefully, as I like to say, moving outside the four walls of our church and into our community. Um, and as John says, to make space in our church for the community uh, so that we can reach out to others with God. This is exciting work. It's a two-year process. Uh, it's about adaptive change. And uh, these Toronto Diocese churches are having a lot of fun understanding what the Spirit of God is up to. The Diocese of Toronto consists of hundreds of parishes, each striving to proclaim the good news while undergoing constant change. Especially within these challenging times, the Diocese works to ensure that all congregations are afforded the ability to grow and to change lives in the name of Jesus.